Hello. In this video, we'll be taking the next step in terms of our buttons. Now that we actually have them on the screen, we're actually going to replace it with images that we've actually pre-created to make our game just look that much nicer. In, in the last video, we actually added the buttons in two different places. There's a button over on the left top and the button in the dead center. You'll see that we just used a snowflake and a fireball effect from the particles materials. So what we want to do is we actually want to create our own image. We'll have a play and an options button. To do that, we actually need to go into Photoshop and ignoring any other projects that you have open, go File, New, and we're going to create a new one called, let's call this called Button. From here, we'll set the width to be 200 and the height to be 50. Now to navigate in between tabs in Photoshop, just as a quick reminder, you can select and change around like that. So what we're going to do is we're actually going to create a button that looks very, very similar to this play button that we have here. So just a big oval with a background and the text in it. And you'll notice that this has a checkerboard pattern, which we'll talk about in a moment. So selecting our image and zooming in, we'll quickly grab the oval tool, select the oval, we'll grab our paint bucket tool, and it'll ask us to rasterize the image, that's fine, we'll click OK to that, and we'll color that one red, and finally we'll select the text tool, and type in play. So currently that looks like an alright button, and it also looks very similar to the one we have there. The only difference is that background, the, the checkerboard pattern versus the plain white. Now, the difference between those two at the moment is the case where that checkerboard pattern means it's transparent, and transparent means you can see through. Now, where white is, we're actually going to see white. So if I took this button into our Unity game, you'll actually see the same effect where this black outline is, where it's not actually part of the fireball and is usually ignored. However, on the snowflake, what you actually see is it's Actually, you can see all around the outlines. You don't have this black or this white outline. So you have this white outline on this one. With this button play, or play button, you actually see that it's transparent, and transparent makes it like the snowflake. How do we get rid of this white background? Well, to do that, we go over to our Layers window, we select our background, right button click, and can select Layer from Background. We can just go with our default settings and it converts it to a layer and you'll notice that the padlock disappears from the right side. From here, we can actually just drag this one down over the top of the recycle bin icon and you'll now see that that one there is the exact same. Now that being said, I'm going to close that one down just to avoid confusion. So now we actually have this one. We have the play text written and the ellipse. Now if I was to save that, I'm just going to go file save as, and for the moment I'm just going to save that one to the desktop, button.psd. Now there's a reason why I'm saving it as a PSD for the moment. We'll just go OK. So that's been saved to, uh, to the desktop. So I'm going to unclick play and I'm just going to import that image. So I'm just going to go back to assets, right button click and create a new folder. And I'm not going to call it images, I'll call it textures. So when I open up the textures, I'm going to go right click, import new asset, and navigate to the desktop and find that button, the Adobe Photoshop image. And you'll see that it's come in like this. Now remembering from the previous one, it was just a matter of squiggling and dragging over the top and placing on to our script. When we click play, all of a sudden we now have that play button there. But there's still two problems with this. The very first one is it doesn't look right. It's got all these pixels and blotches everywhere. And that actually is in relation to the way that it's been imported. The second issue is I'm not a big fan of this gray box on the outside either. And I'm also not a fan of the button either. So I'm going to change the way that the button looks as well. So there's three problems we're going to look at. The very first one is we're going to go back to our textures folder and our button, and on the right hand side in the inspector window, you'll see a texture type. Now, with this, there's a quite a few different texture types you can use, but in terms of the fact that we're doing a GUI, we can actually select GUI there. By clicking apply, you notice the image is a lot cleaner already, and when we click play, 
you can see that all that pixelation is gone and it looks a lot smoother. But I'm still not happy with how it looks in terms of the way it's set out. Most games don't necessarily need a big play button and we've got this grey box on the outside anyway. So the very first thing we're going to do is I'm actually going to go back to that file. Now I've actually got that file open in Photoshop and I'm actually going to close it down so there's nothing open in Photoshop. In Unity I can actually double click on that and it will open up in my desired program, in this case Unity, in Photoshop sorry, and it actually shows me exactly where my button is. Now to make this look a bit more of a scary game is probably the theme I'm going to go for, is I'm actually going to delete that ellipse layer as well. So now it's just the word play. And it doesn't look too scary at the moment, does it? So what we're going to do is we're going to change the font. Now there's a couple of ways to do that. I prefer to use the tool on the right hand side, the character tool, and then changing the font through this side. However, that doesn't exist in CS4. So we can select the text tool again. And when I've resized it, I do need to apply the transformation. Select the text tool and select that layer. When I select those layers, I can then choose a font. Now, you can choose any font that you wish, but I'm actually going to choose one that I've loaded on there beforehand, and it's called You Murderer. Now, the reason why is I am actually looking for a bit of a scary game title effect. Now, once I'm up here, that's probably as good as I'm going to get it. I could retype it completely, and there we go. But that's black, and I'm actually going to change that to... No, we'll leave it black for the moment. So I'm just going to go File, Save. So I've completely changed the way the button looks. And go back to Unity, and it automatically updates that change. So I'm going to go back to Play again, and you'll see that that button's changed already. Now, this grey outline of a box that's not the best way that we actually like to do it. So in the next video we'll actually be looking at getting rid of this grey outline box to get rid of it. But we do need to create an options one as well. So the very first thing we're going to do is I'm going to go back to Photoshop, go File and create a new image. Again I'm going to keep the buttons the same size and call this an options button. Now, in terms of game design, you should always make sure that your buttons look similar. There's no point to have a big rainbow coloured button and then the other one dripping with blood, um, unless the one with dripping blood is kind of rainbow colour anyway. So the very first thing I'm going to do is just create a text and I'm going to call that one Options. Drag that one down. And you could be a little bit more specific and go with the font size so it doesn't look really weird. But I'm just sticking with this because I, I do like that. Once you've got that, we need to right button click on that. And we're going to delete the background layer this time instead of duplicating it there or turning it to a layer, then deleting. It's just another way to go through about things. Now that we have that, I'm going to make it big, go file. And I'm actually going to again save this one to the desktop. I'm going to call this one options save and OK. Go back to Unity and go File, Assets, sorry, Import New Asset and get the Options button. Now that one's been imported. I can actually just drag and drop Options over the Snowflake one to replace that and hit Play. Now again you can see the difference, it's the exact same font. You actually get this white effect over the top which is not what we want. So we want to unclick play, go back to our texture and change the texture type again to GUI. From here we click apply, hit play. You can actually see that that's taken effect already. In the final thing that I'm going to do is actually just move the button so it's a little bit below the play button. So I'm going to open up the script And you can actually see that this one here is going to be my second texture. Now, although this one says first and then that, I want this one underneath. Now, just because I do this, cut it and paste underneath, does not make the button go underneath. So I'm actually going to leave it as it was. We need to put it underneath in terms of remembering that that's the X position from the top 
left corner of the screen going across. That is the Y position, is how far down it is. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go screen dot width divided by two and screen dot height. Now you could retype it, but copying and pasting is easier as long as you know what you're doing. And let's just go minus 400. And actually, let's go minus 100. And then in terms of that, we will go minus 100 there as well. We'll hit save. We'll go back to Unity, wait for that change to occur, and hit play. And you've now got options and play on top of each other. Now they are in the wrong spot, aren't they? So let's actually fix that up as well. So to do that, we go to our button script object, and that's just a matter of going to our textures, dragging and dropping the play button over the top of that one, and the options button on top of that one. If we hit play, there we go. Okay. So in the next video, what we'll be doing is removing that grey box around the outside of the button, so it just looks like text. It will look a little bit nicer and give that game our extra little bit of polish.